Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is vector components, and here are the two questions we wish to answer. What are vector components, and how do you identify the x and y components of a vector? Let's get started. Vectors are those quantities that have a magnitude and a direction. When it comes to the direction, we could describe the direction of a vector as being right or left or up or down, even north, south, east, and west. And we can even have vectors that are southwest or northeast. Like this vector that you see here. On a map, we would describe that as a northeast vector. And as a northeast vector, we think of it as consisting of two parts. One of the parts is a north part, and the other part is an east part. Vectors directed at angles to the traditional xy axes are thought of as consisting of parts, and we refer to these parts as vector components. For instance, here we see a vector directed into the third quadrant. It's a southwest displacement vector, and being directed southwest, it has two components. It has a southern component, and it has a western component. And here's another vector. It's a force vector, and it's directed upwards and rightwards. And as, as an upwards and rightward force vector, it consists of a rightward component and of an upward component. What makes a vector component important is that it describes the effect that a vector has in a given direction. For instance, here we see a, a, a picture of a boat crossing a river. It's heading northeast, and thus it has a northeast velocity vector. But that velocity vector has two components, one directed eastward that impacts how fast the boat travels from one bank to the opposite bank and thus affects the time it takes for the boat to travel eastward 140 meters across the river. The northern component, on the other hand, affects how far up the river the boat might travel in this same amount of time. Vector components describe the effect of a vector in a given direction. And as a second example, let's consider an airplane that is flying from Chicago here towards the Canada border. But it's flying northwest. And because it's flying northwest, it has a velocity with two components. It has a western component, and it has a northern component. The distance to the border, straight north, is 1,500 kilometers. And it's the northern component of the velocity that describes how fast it heads northward. It describes the effect in the northerly direction. So the time it takes to travel to that border, 1,500 kilometers north of Chicago, depends upon this northerly component of the velocity vector. So vector components describe the effect of a vector in a given direction. And here's a third example. We see a pitcher hung by two wires, and each wire exerts a tension force upon the pitcher. And being at angles to the horizontal, these tension forces have a upward and a horizontal component. And it's the upward component of these tension forces that contribute to the upward pull and thus balance out the downward force of gravity. If we think of the free body diagram on the picture, it would show two tension forces, both directed at angles to the horizontal, and then one downward force of gravity. And it's the vertical component of these tension force that would balance out the force of gravity. The horizontal components simply balance each other out. Mathematically, a vector component is the projection of a vector onto the x or the y axes. So here we see vector a, and I wish to determine its components. And I do so by projecting vector a onto the two axes. So I'll begin by going to the tail of vector a and drawing a crosshair, and then extending x and y axes the entire length of vector a. Then I'll go to the arrowhead of vector a, and I'm going to draw projections perpendicular to these two axes. And where these two projections intersect the axes, that's where the vector component will end. So I'll draw it from the tail of vector a out to these points of intersection of the perpendicular projections with the axes. And there you see the x and y components of vector a. So vectors have a direction. Here's an east and a north and a west and a southern vector, each of which has only one component. But here's a northeast vector. And this northeast vector has two components. It has an eastern component, and has, it has a northern component. And if we understand components as perpendicular projections of the vector onto the axes, we would be able to make some predictions about the relative size of the two components. For instance, if I were to project this vector onto the east and the north, 
axes with a perpendicular projection, I would find that the eastern component is larger than the northern component. I'll contrast that with this vector, which seems to be more northern than eastern. And if I project it onto the axes, I notice that the northern component is larger than the eastern component. Here's a northwest vector. And if I go to the arrowhead of it and project onto the axes this vector, I would notice that the northern component is larger than the western component. In contrast with this vector, whose projections onto the axes indicate that it's the western component that is larger than the northern component. This same process of projecting a vector onto the axes can be done for any vector in any one of the quadrants, and we would be able to figure out the direction of the components and the relative size of one component relative to the other. Well, I hope you have a better understanding what a vector component is and a comfort in how to identify the x and y components of a vector. It's at this time in every video, I'd like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for helping this learning stick. But before I help you out with an action plan, maybe you could help us out. If you like the video, why don't you press on the like button or even subscribe to the channel and tap on the bell to get notifications. And finally, if you have a question or comment, we'd be glad to hear from you. Leave it in the comments section down below. Now for your action plan, and it's pretty simple. We just have two action steps. The first one is, if you were to download Minds on Physics app number one to your phone or tablet, and then check out the Vectors and Projectiles module on that app, there's a Mission VP5, and it's a perfect follow-up to this video. The second part of our action plan is we have a tutorial on our website that is written in an easy to understand language. And if you go to the third chapter on forces in motion in two dimensions and you look in chapter one or lesson one, you're going to find a page there called Vector Components. It's a great follow-up, great reference that supports this video. Whatever you do, we wish you the best of luck.